Hey guys, Krishna Madhav Solution here, and in this video, I am going to show you the solution for question 2 from the May 2022 POA paper 2. If you want to check out the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so it reads, the treasurer of Suri Youth and Sports Club has listed the following details about the club's affairs for the year ended 30th April 2022. Okay, so we have subscriptions, refreshments bought for the club, clubs, staff wages, rental income, secretarial and admission expenses, expenses, costs, repairs, sales. Okay, so these are all receipts and payments. Additional information, so on the 1st of May 2021, which is the start of the year, the cash at bank was 2045 and that was overdrawn, which means it's an overdraft, which means you spent more money than you had and currently you technically have a negative bank balance. So that balance will be brought down on the credit side. Uh, the 30th April 2020. So, so we do it on the closing balance. So what do you want us to do? It says, use the form provided on page nine to prepare the club's receipts and payments account for the year ended 30th April 2022. Clearly identify the closing balance for the start of the new year. Let's take a look at that form. So a nice T accountish looking form for eight marks, all right. Let's go back up to the information and let's pull up my solution as well. So one thing at a time. So we're going to put in first the opening balance that is 2045 overdrawn. All right now, don't forget, please head up Surrey Youth and Sports Club receipts and payments account for the year ended 30th April 2022. Now the overdrawn balance again is a liability, and liabilities are brought down on the credit side, right? So balance brought down, overdrawn 2045. First item up subscription, right? So subscriptions is basically how these sports clubs make their money. That's like their major revenue source. So that's a receipt which will go on the debit side. Then we have refreshments bought for club members. So that's a payment. Payments go on the credit side, which you're going to see right here. 980. Club staff wages, 2200. Again, another payment goes on the credit side. Rental income, 2420. So income is a well an inflow or a receipt. That's going to go, however, on the debit side. Then we have secretarial and administrative expenses. Again, another expense, another payment on the credit side. Same thing for ground maintenance cost of 560 and for social evening cost 4380 and for club house repairs. All of them are payments, they all go on the credit side. The social evening ticket sales, however, that is a receipt, right? And that's going to go on the debit side, 17,880. All we have to do now is balance off, right? So the total on the debit side is 25,760. That's the match across here. If you add up these items, however, you're only going to get 22,065. So when you do your little arithmetic, you're going to close the balance of 3,695, which you bring down on the debit side. So now we've gone from having an overdraft in our receipts and payments account to having, a, what you might call it, uh, a positive balance, to having money in the bank account, right? Uh, if you want to check out a tutorial on how to do a receipts and payments account, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check it out. And um, yeah, let's take a look at part B to this question, shall we? Okay, so part B reads, on 30th April 2022, end of the year, the treasurer of Suri Youth and Sports Club presented the club's financial team with the following information, right? So the bank statement balance at the end of the year is 2,125. The receipts and payments book balance, they have a question mark because, of course, we had to find it just now in the previous part of the question. I was um, 36.95, right? Now, it says discrepancies between the two records were discovered as follows. Now, you have this description of discrepancies and you have six items. The first thing they want us to do in part B is to state which of the discrepancies above match the two items in the following table by writing the corresponding item letter from the table above in the spaces provided in the table below. Now, they want you to write a letter that corresponds to something. Doesn't that sound like a multiple choice question? In which case, why is it in a paper two? Put it in a paper one. And there are questions that is in a paper one. So to me, this piece was a waste of space on this paper, right? And you could tell CSEC I said so. Anyhow, um, right. So they want to know which item is a standing order and which is a direct deposit. So if you are unfamiliar with these bank reconciliation statements, uh, items of terminology, I'm going to put a link up, a card up there, sorry, and a link in the description below. So be sure to check out that bank playlist, right? It'll actually help you the rest of this question. Now, 
A standing order is an automatic payment set up with the bank to make a payment on our behalf. So we don't have to keep making any payment every month, every week, every six months. The bank does it for us, right? Now, I'm just going to go straight to item C. Insurance premium for the club, which was paid by the bank as per instructions, had not been recorded in the recent payments account. So the standing order is item C. The direct deposit, that's when your customers or whoever make a payment straight to your bank account instead of giving it to you and then you put it in your bank account. So like with the advent, well, well COVID, you know, kind of forced us to kind of go with the online banking. So a lot of times when my clients pay me, they pay me, pay me via online banking. So I constantly have to keep checking my online banking to make sure that I, I'm seeing the payments coming in and keep updating my cash book. Because I mean, it's good to know how much money you have, right? It's very important to know that because we have expenditure that we have to make, uh, that we have to pay, right? Anyhow, sorry. Um, so the item here that is the direct deposit is item A. The bank statement show that some subscription payments were paid directly at the bank by club members, direct deposits. These payments were not recorded in the recent payments account. Okay, cool. So the table should look like this, right? Term, standing order, direct deposit, item C, item A. Cool. Now, the next part of the question says to prepare the updated receipts and payments account to show the updated cash at bank figure for Siri Youth and Sports Club at 1st May 2022. Begin with your closing cash balance calculated from the receipts and payments account in A. Right, so we know what we have to do, right? So this is the format they gave you. It's seven marks. Let's go back up to the details. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to put in my balance in my updated receipts and payments account. So I have my opening debit balance, 36.95, right? Now, we just talked about part A being a direct deposit. So a direct deposit is where customers put money directly into your bank account instead of paying you and you then put it in, right? Now that's an increase. An increase in the bank account will go on the debit side. So you're gonna see these subscriptions, direct deposit, 200 there, nice. Item B, payment of a check was recorded twice in the bank statement. Well, that's a bank statement situation. We don't have to make any adjustments in our cash book, or sorry, our receipts and payments account for it. But that's going to appear in the bank rec. So just mark that item B will be in the bank rec. Item C, insurance premium for the club, which was paid by the bank. Oh, so this is a standing order, right? So it's a payment, and payments will decrease the amount of money we have in the bank. Bank is an asset, and to record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So you're going to see here, insurance or standing order 590. Okay, next item D, a check previously received from M. Vidal was dishonored by the bank. Okay, when we initially received the check from M. Vidal, it would have gone on the debit side. If it was dishonored, it means we did not actually get the money. So what we have to do is cancel the receipt. So that means canceling the debit entry. Canceling, or as I like to say, counterbalancing. How do we do that? Well, to cancel a debit or to counterbalance it, you make an entry on the credit side for the same amount, which will cancel it off, which we'll see here. See, M. Vidal, this on a check, 430. All right, item E, bank charges had not been recorded in the receipts and payments account. So bank charges was literally what the bank charges you. They take money out of your account as a payment to themselves for taking care of your account and safeguarding your money. So since it's a payment, it's going to go on the credit side. All right, bank charges 80. And item F, a check for 740 issued to S. Carter for catering services was recorded in the receipts and payments account as 470. Okay, so the check was for 740. We recorded 470, which is too low. The difference between the 740 and the 470, between the correct amount and the incorrect amount, is I think 270. So that amount is missing from the credit side. Again, if we issued a check to S. Carter, we paid S. Carter. All payments go on the credit side of the receipts and payments account. The credit side is currently, as we say, understated by $270. How do we fix that? We simply put in the $270 on the credit side, right? Now, you could say understated payment. You could state S. Carter, right? Now, that's those are all the items that will go inside of this. So, now all we have to do is balance it off. So, it's $38.95 is the larger of the two totals. So, when you subtract to the total, when you add up these items here, we get just about $13.70. So when you subtract that, you're going to get $2,525, which you're going to bring down on the debit side. So that is your updated receipts and payments account balance. Okay. But the last thing we have to do is a bank reconciliation statement. Let me pull up the format so you can take a look uh, at what they gave you to use format-wise. 
Right? So you can see here, prepare a bank reconciliation statement for Siri Youth and Sports Club for the month of April 2022, beginning with your updated cash at bank figure from B part 2. So that's always an issue. What balance do we use at start? Right Now you could use your updated cash book uh, or, or cash at bank figure or your bank statement figure. Here, they give you a specific instruction and you need to follow that instruction, okay? So, let me go back up to the information. Okay, so you see my little bank right here, headed up properly, name of the entity, name of the statement, and the period to which it applies. Now, we just worked out the updated cash at bank balance, um, which was the receipts and payments account balance. That was 2525. Now, like I said, only item B is to be put here. All of the other items were put in the receipts and payments account, the updated version. So, how do we deal with it? So, it says payment of a check was recorded twice in the bank statement. So, it means they took out 400 twice. Now, in our receipts and payments account, it would only have been taken out once. Now, again, I strongly suggest you check out that bank Rex playlist, which I linked earlier and in the description because it'll explain it in more detail. But long story short, what we're trying to do is make the two figures um, match them up, explain why the balance in the receipts and payments account is different from the balance in the bank statement, which is currently 2,125 as the question told us up there. Now, as you can see, the, the difference is clearly 400, right, which we're going to subtract and that's going to give us 2125, right? So as you can see, it reconciles quite easily, right? But why do we subtract it here? Because it is a subtraction that has taken place or has been entered in the bank statement that has not been entered in the cash book. Now, it is also an error. So it's not something that we are going to put in the cash book because you might be asking, well, Chris, if it's a payment that was in the bank statement that wasn't in the cash book, why didn't we just put it what with the other items in the previous part of the question we just did? Again, the question says the payment was recorded twice, which is not supposed to be. So it's an error in the bank statement. So what the bank has to do is the bank has to go back and fix that error. In other words, they have to add back 400 to our balance, right? Or minus the minus, which is a plus, as we know, right? So the bank state, the bank has that responsibility. All we are trying to do via the bank reconciliation statement is show that we know why the two balances, the cash book, the receipts and payments account, sorry, and the bank statement balance, we know why they disagree. That's all we're trying to do. And it disagrees because there's an extra payment that was recorded twice, right? And the amount that was recorded extra was 400, and it's an outflow. So if we were to take it away from the updated receipts and payments account balance, we would match the bank statement balance exactly. And that's about it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question two from the May 2022 PUA paper two. If you have any further questions about it, please feel free to put them in the comments section below and I will respond to you when I get a chance, okay? If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up there. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty interesting PUA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.